Hello and welcome to The Skating Lesson. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Beyer. Hello. Hi, Jonathan. Well, Jonathan, this is This and That. We are going to discuss everything going on in figure skating amidst um, the coronavirus. And while it's not much, there is um, a lot to discuss. Much. So yeah. <laughs> this would have been um, the eighth edition of The Skating Lesson covering the World Figure Skating Championships. So that is strange not to be doing this uh but especially I, because last year we really got it with the world coverage do you remember we did yes. a separate episode we had megan and we had mark and we had jenny and we had doug it was in and we were actually re like in the early stages of planning that i you know we were talking people and i had my short list of you know who for each at penciling people in and right as i remember being like i think they're gonna cancel and then yeah it, obviously they needed to but so it's very interesting um i don't know about you but personally there was i work in healthcare i don't think that's like a secret but um once i i work in health insurance and once it all started, right? Like getting here, paying attention to Italy and really realizing that it was really coming and not some bird flu or, you know, something that, you know, comes but doesn't really affect a large portion. I remember being like, well, they're going to cancel. They're obviously going to cancel. And I was talking to certain skaters and they're like, but everyone is here. And I was thinking, but it's not just about the skaters. You have, it has nothing to do with the athletes. That like it does to do have something to do with the athletes. Dependent. You have to protect the athletes, yeah. but you also have 20,000 people in the, in the venue. That's more than 10. Yeah. Many of whom are in like the bad demographic, right? I mean, skating right. is not right. for the young fans lately. I it's mean, true. young it's fans true. certainly can't afford those tickets. So let's... Right. <laughs> well, which were already ridiculous. Mm -hmm. They were so expensive. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it was interesting. Once, so once I kind of knew that they were going to get canceled, I've been so busy with my regular life. I haven't even like thought like, oh, today was going to be the world. Like, and it was so interesting seeing the athletes make posts. And I think some of the athletes have been better than others. And this... In general. <laughs> We have to, we have and to also in their handling of the coronavirus on social media. Can we yeah. talk about this? Okay. Yeah, let's talk it out, Dave. We know that these performing types sometimes have narcissistic qualities. Not saying that they are like that, full through and through. But there's a lack of self awareness that this is a global problem. Above your rhythm dance, above your short program, above just. What shows how small some of their worlds really are. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting that, and I, I feel bad. <laughs> it's, it's, it's similar to when John Coughlin passed and a lot of people reacted in unfortunate ways that would later result in a list and things like that where people were criticized. Right. They just, and I remember trying to explain this to people, they just don't know. They don't get it. They do not get right. that this is so much There's bigger. There's an inability to zoom out yeah. a little bit and see maybe a, a big picture like you're saying. I agree. <laughs> so some of those posts were just... <laughs> heavy-handed. They were heavy-handed. And then, I mean, we get, we get so many messages, and by the end of the season, I am spent, right? And... I know. <laughs> you really get it. You really get it. <laughs> so some people were messaging me privately being like, Oh, I feel for the athlete so much. And I was like, you should feel for your grandmother who might die from this. <laughs> like, hello. You feel for everyone else who doesn't have a season next year because their job is not waiting for them next season. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, come on. Like these people. It's all relative. Like, it's all relative. People, they will skate another day. Their parents were probably in the 1%. <laughs> it's fine. Okay. I mean, it's well, sad, but it's fine. Right. Like it's, yeah, it's unfortunate because actually of all time to be sort of stuck at home from a total guilty standpoint, having something like a full world championships to watch would definitely help fill that time for me. But um, yeah, I, I'm intrigued the aftermath of this. And I think skating is a good example of ways it didn't just cancel the worlds because I'm intrigued what this does to the lineup in the fall, 
mm-hmm. how they're going to determine entries for next year's world championships, which are so crucial, obviously, in picking the Olympics, you mm-hmm. know, entries and all that sort of stuff. So, I mean, there's a lot to handle, but one has to keep the pulse on the fact that far more horrific things are also happening as a result of this. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because, and I think it's all hit us at different times. So I was still working and going into the office last week. And the reason for that, I worked from home the day, that, I was working from home the day that Worlds were canceled. Um, and I, I just... I just had a feeling that it, and it was going to happen. And then I got to, you know, they said, they announced that the decision was going to come later that day. And I was like, okay, it's going to be canceled. Um, interesting is that, so when I was still going into the office, it was like hitting home, but not fully hitting home that all of our lives were about to change. Like I knew worlds were canceled and I knew things, but it wasn't really. And I was like, we're going to be working from home soon. Right? Like that's going to be, but it, the full shutdown of things like the realization of that and the mental adjustment that I think happened over the last week and what that does to you in a way, I don't think it like fully took approach. So last Saturday, my, my skating coach was like, so you still want your lesson? And I was like, I felt like I should say no. And instinctively I just felt myself, my people please yourself go like, yeah, yes. Okay. Um, yeah, I, you don't have to worry about me. I won't be a baby and overreact. I'll show up for my skating lesson. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. But at the same time, I had this feeling in the back of my head being like, this could be the last time you skate for months. Like, months. Um, yeah. And it was so interesting because I came back from the skating rink being like, and they were Lysoling it the entire time. Like, Lysol was going up. I know. And I was thinking like, I came back and I put on the news and that's when Hoboken was getting shut down and things. In the, and I was like, I felt like the biggest, most irresponsible human being. Right. Well, there's a thing at the beginning because it was, are we overreacting? Are we not overreacting? Is it going overboard to cancel the championship? Is it not enough that they didn't do it early enough? I mean, yeah. it's hard to know in the yeah. beginning. And my daily life hasn't really changed that much. I still go to Central Park, walk around. It's just nobody's there. Are the parks closed? The parks are closed in New Jersey, but I still do go on walks. Oh, so Central Park is open, and I live pretty close to it, which has been like a godsend for clearing my mind and not going totally insane. But it's so as sunny as it's been, there's like no one in it. Okay. So I, I feel like I'm still social distancing. No one's within 20 feet of me, and it's, mm-hmm. I'm walking around the reservoir. It's crazy. Yeah, I'm just social distancing with my parents. So um, full disclosure, like, I didn't go food shopping early enough and uh, didn't have, like, food or toilet paper and was thinking, wait, like, I'm not stockpiled for a long period of time. And it was interesting where in New Jersey... Um, Whatever night Trump spoke on TV and it started to all of a sudden like become more real, like it, immediately all of the supermarkets were bare. Okay. Before Stolova yeah. went to Target in Edgewater to try to get water, everything was bare. Okay. I mean, <laughs> I hope someone got her water. I would not want to see her. Angry, I'm sure. Right. I'm sure. Um, she's very hydrated. She's, I can. I hope. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, so yeah, by that point, it was like, all right, so I'm with mom and dad, and Jonathan, it's a lot. That's, yeah, I, I'm not going anywhere near my family during this time. Well, I didn't, want, I didn't want to be isolated and alone, right? Like, a, yeah. but at the same Total time, yeah. we're having a lot of togetherness. Gather. We're on a schedule Live that loud. is, we're on a schedule that isn't mine, right? Yeah. Yeah, you're joining their their life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel busier than ever. <laughs> Not just Home because project. of them. Okay. Because okay. so many different organizations or things that I'm a part of now have messages on Zoom. And I literally can't get out of them because I don't have an excuse. Like, I don't. Mm-hmm. Right. We're very what busy. have you got? What have you got to do that's better than this? Yeah. Nothing. You're like, just be alone. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. I th- it makes the day go very fast, but like things 
time is of the... I mean, I only have colored one celebrity mugshot, Jonathan, okay? So... I brought this out for you, and that's a good one. But did you get... Someone gave me this one. Oh. Oh. And there, there are some poorly drawn, but, like, amazing outfits happening here. Oh, I would love that. Is that on Amazon? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, Ty, I, know. I love your coloring book, Ty, and I have used it, but I don't have it with me. Um, oh, yeah. Got to travel with it. But I already used the Ty coloring book. And I don't... Oh. I don't, yeah, I don't, like you. I don't have, like, Please. five copies of it like I do with the Golden Girls, because that one, I felt like I needed it. I should have just photocopied the Golden Girls coloring book. The problem is, is that when I got into coloring, I moved into the communications department. In the legal department, no one would care if you want... Like, those lawyers are all so arrogant that they do what they want and no one is, like, second-guessing you. Writers are neurotic. And they'll be like, are you using company resources for personal things? For coloring? You're like, no. I'm just coloring <laughs> Golden Girls <laughs> thing for HR. <laughs> for office morale. So, like, I own several copies of the Golden Girls coloring book because if you mess up Blanche's skin tone, you you just, you, you can't you redo it. You got to do it yeah. again. Okay. Yeah. I practice. I try to get better. You know, it's, it, it keeps us sane. Okay. So. It's quite good, Dave. Quite I good. also sent you an invite to our off-ice workout class that we've been doing every day. Oh, I just saw that come through, and I was like, mm -hmm. I don't know what that means, but it sounds like exercise. Ah! <laughs> so, Igor and Kristen are doing, um, a, like, an off-ice workout class, which is, like, somewhat skating geared, but my parents have even done it some days. And then, okay. But then the days that my parents don't do it, they're looking at who they know on the screen. As on Zoom, you can toggle through. And my mom goes, why is Law taking breaks? Wasn't she a skater? What's she, what's she doing there? Did she go get water? What's happening? And I'm like, Mom, you're not doing the workout. Like, what? Yeah, like, what can you... It's become, like, daily entertainment. My mom's like, what? what Amazing. Was... And my dad's like, what's wrong with Igor's thighs? They're so big. I, ha I haven't seen thighs like that. So, but it's really great. Like, we are going to be so... If they recommend you drink kerosene, don't do it. <laughs> We're going to get to that. Okay. He, he had his own recommendation. And I was like... Okay. So... <laughs> but he's very fit, your dad. Oh, not my dad. Igor had a recommendation. So oh, Igor did. Oh, yes. Okay. Igor's thighs are just oh, like... about this silver? They're just yeah. trunks. Okay? Like, you just have yeah. not seen such a thing. So he had us do this, like, workout with soup cans or weights. I felt like I had the flu the next morning. It was, I mean, sore is set on, but it was great. So... Okay. But we have like okay. a ballet class. I shared the link on Facebook. If you want to do it, you can message me. It's ten dollars every day, but it's fantastic. It's really good, and it, it like okay. gives a sense of community in the time yeah. when you never miss. Well, this could be so easy much. for me to come out like eight million pounds heavier. So, like, that's why you I need already... to work out with Igor. Okay. I know. I've been doing these like walks and stuff like that, but I'm definitely eating all of my quarantine food. All come on, time. you have to hear Igor say, lift your soups of can. Like, come on, you have to like, hear, come on, you just got to do it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Fair enough. But so we were talking about Aliona's book and in Aliona's book, which my friend is translating, I sent you a snippet of it. Yes. She talks about how her dad was giving her kerosene to... Uh, clean out her blood. Now, her dad was a weightlifter. I'm guessing he's also an intense person. Apparently, he's still in ridiculous shape. Um, okay. I mean, <laughs> Aliona opening up walnuts in her door using the hinge to, like, crack walnuts because she didn't have a nutcracker. I mean, the visuals are just incredible. Right? The steel bread or, you know, and this idea of the rotten apples. Like, I don't... Oh. The whole thing is very dark. And it's interesting because, unfortunately, it does seem like one of those, I want the biographies that get into the nitty gritty. Like this was like, here's a girl and she works really hard. So anyways, I won Junior World. And I was like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I, we needed the journey to get, <laughs> I now, wanna know how you got to Junior Worlds and won. Yeah. So, and the person translating was like, 
It doesn't give all of that. Someone else, Marie, who always messages us about Germany. We also have yeah. Leonardo, who always messages us about Italy. There are two different people, yet very similar, living on parallel tracks. And very helpful. Very, very helpful. helpful, right? Now, on the ground. Now, yeah. do they only care about skaters from their country? That's what I've never understood. But anyway, these fans are very helpful, yeah. okay? Yeah, they're the lifeline to the, the inside info there. So Marie said, I think you have to read Aliona's book and the Tatiana Flad book and kind of put them together for a full picture. And I was like, okay. Okay. Good to know. You know, I don't think the Tatiana's book had the real Russian autobiography stories about eating rotten apples and, you know, drinking carrots. Which to me, of course, is the least intriguing. Oh, oh no. J- Jonathan, I mean, it's intriguing, but that's not what I'm... Jonathan. I'm, I'm not craving you, more of that. I mean... Now, when we see Aliona wear her pantsuits and her bodysuits, I'm thinking... It's the kerosene. It's the kerosene. <laughs> it's the rotten apples she ate. I mean, there's... I mean, literally the passage where she... Where she is vomiting up the rotten apples on the floor as the dog is looking at her. And she With thinks, an inner smile. With an inner smile that he knows she's going to win the Olympics. I mean, if that isn't that is not literature. I don't know what it it's, is. It's literally a spoof. Like it is <laughs> mockumentary worthy. Yeah. yeah, it's what I want from a Russian autobiography. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. so yeah. mm-hmm. I am also for Patreon going to record ones of the Tatiana book, mm. and I was trying to like ask Ty like what parts of this are real? And so apparently before the Lake Placid Olympics, Tarasova brought Irina Rodnina um, and Alexander Zaitsev to a town in Massachusetts to practice. And in her telling, the entire town came out to watch them and applaud them every day when they were practicing. And when they sk- stood on the top of the podium, it was because all of America understood that they were the best. You know, that they, it's like some long passage of them practicing. I mean, based Not, on... Yeah, I'm gonna guess that wasn't the story that was being told, yeah. You know, there may have been a few dozen people, perhaps, not doubting. I think people may have come out, maybe a few hundred, but I mean, it, yeah. it is told like there were 30,000 people from the town, literally like <laughs> ringing cowbells, seeing Russian greatness before everyone. Okay. Like this... Exactly. And we're thrilled that the top American pair had to withdraw so that this team could win. I think not. She cast doubt on, Rand- on Randy's injury. She did. She said, mm. as a skating professional, we know it is not true. Okay. 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 Yeah, I was like, I don't even know where to go with that. (laughs) I mean, I enjoy any good Russian autobiography. So the chapters on Pasha Grishok, (laughs) as intense as you would like them to be. Right. There was someone was posting video of Tarasova skating. Right? From the European. Flow skate. With that, from the 60s. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, with that double loop or whatever she had You know that on. flow skate is a man, right? I always thought of flow skate as like our nice skating I thought like flow like Florence. Yes. Yeah, like, no, yeah. Those are his, his initials. It's really Fraser. But for years, I thought of him as like uh-huh. some nice lady with That's cats. a gal named Flo. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> With cat eye glasses. With like, like really good quality videotape. No, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. These are just like, it was mind blowing when it, when I, it all clicked. Yeah. You know. <laughs> so, anyway, yes. So, uh, yeah, I recommend, and if you read German, Aliona's book, get it, get it. But and, now, Tatiana's book is only in Russian, or it's. it's all I think it's in German. Into... It's going to be translated into English, though. So she has said that for a while. I know she's working on it. Yes. So, okay. Yeah. I'd buy it. Yeah. Now, did you see the picture of a Terry's girls with the masks? Jonathan, and again, could you read yeah. my sarcasm coming across on the page? Anyone could. Anyone could. No, or anyone no. should. That was not what happened. Okay. I said they are really nailing social distancing. And if you've ever watched watched, the show or followed the I think you know exactly the way my voice went. Yeah, I could hear you say it. I could hear you say it. 
Like, They're really nailing it. Yeah. <laughs> the disdain was obvious. There was one nurse. I don't know where she's from, and I don't even know if she's ever watched the show before. She kept using these multi-syllable words, calling me unprofessional, and um, say Why? she thought it was a horrible example for people who are going to go copy those Atari girls. I mean, I'm too late. <laughs> They've already copied them in every other way. <laughs> True. True. I mean, did you read that article in the Guardian? That was dark. Do Do we know who that skater was? No. But no, I didn't they know. didn't name this. That was interesting. So this has long been something that is discussed within skating circles, right? That the, there are practices that go on that have gone on in sports like skating and gymnastics for years, right? And, and especially so, in However, we where are hearing more about it now and our tolerance for it is growing different. But I yeah. think it was always there. That's okay. why this and it, the juxtaposition with the Aliona chapters makes total sense. And I think we also hear about it more because with the internet, as the gymnast from China learned in 2008, it's harder to falsify ages because there are records that are easily obtained through Wayback machines and internet archives. And so many of this, so much of this information is publicly available so that when someone has an or in their birth date, that's going to come to the surface quicker, right? right. That's going to be right. harder and harder to do, which I do think leads to perhaps discussions about whether people are using hormone blockers and there are many different um, drugs that they can use. We've talked a little bit about in the videos and the doping and things like Icarus. So, I mean, it didn't name anyone by name and it didn't seem like it was a very illustrious figure skater, right? They, did, they didn't seem like they made it to the senior ranks certain by any means. But it was interesting that The Guardian, one of the better ish newspapers posted it and I don't it was just interesting that it came out and was... well yeah I didn't quite understand from an editorial standpoint what it was designed to do or make us think or with this timing like I didn't yeah it does bring in all sorts of questions about the you know the age limit and if anything is going to be voted on but I have to say with everything going on I don't think that that's something that's going to be... Well, and just in case someone didn't read the article, it was about that she was pressured into taking medication that would supposedly prevent puberty from taking over. Yes. But it did the opposite, and it sort of escalated her... As soon as she stopped, right? But I do oh, think... Okay. I do think we see with some skaters, and she talked about how they were also supposed to work out extra hours. I think we do see with some skaters when they take a couple months off and the body goes like that. So, yeah. and that's always the thing with gymnasts is that skaters skate like a certain number of hours a day. And sometimes gymnasts work out like double that. Right. So if a yeah. gymnast takes a week off, like they go, their body changes like that. And yeah. it is, and there are obviously there's starvation going on there. There are things we hear about all the time. So it all adds up together. So anyway, it was just an interesting article that came out. Because there's no one named on the record, because I think they want to live, um, I don't think it'll do much, but I do think it adds... Yeah, I don't think it'll go anywhere, but... I think it'll be one of those things that's referenced in the conversation in the coming months, so... Um, but yeah, what... Okay, so... Speaking of Olympics and things, what... Okay, before we go into what should happen with Worlds, do you think that there's going to be an Olympics this summer? Because I bought tickets to Olympic trials that are in... June, also very expensive, and I was, I did it where you can make three payments on Ticketmaster, just because I didn't want to spend three grand right up front. Um, do you think, like, are those real? I don't see how they could happen, right, at, at this point. The, the Olympics themselves or the trials, or either. Both, right? I mean, that's the thing, when they're talking about, the Olympic Committee was so adamant, we're still doing it, we're still doing it. But it's the things that lead up to it that mm -hmm. can't happen that need to be. Who can be training in their normal way right now? Who can be making selections yeah. at a time like this? I don't. And it's also. Let alone. So I think, hey, one, there's the public health thing of we don't know if this virus is going to be gone by July, right? So this was originally, originally when like a week and a half ago, which seems like years ago they were saying mm -hmm. they'll have to decide by may right but now it seems like may won't mean anything we'll, we'll likely still 
potentially be in the thick it'll of just be more question marks yeah. news flash i don't think we're going back to work in a week right like i think we're still right. gonna be stuck home um so i am thinking that that is i don't see how it could happen phil hirsch wrote a really scathing piece about it about the USOC, uh, the US, o- sorry, they're, they're now the USOPC. They put the Paralympics in there, maybe for a rebranding oh, okay. of sort. I think it makes them seem softer, right? Yeah. Less of the... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't see how they could go on. So if you think about it, countries are obviously going to be impacted. I mean, we had people sending me nasty grams when I posted that I thought that it was irresponsible that the junior synchronized skating championships were go on and there were fans writing well we have a good public health system in the uk we're going to be fine and it was interesting because their <laughs> prime minister had a different strategy like and then reversed it within hours because right. they were going to do the right. you know we'll just have people get it and just have the old people stay home and then that didn't work so right. well and then it's not chicken yeah. right so if you think about each country being on a different time schedule there's no real even way of knowing how long the athletes will have to prepare. And we always talk about periodization and training. I mean, you're now taking everyone out. And qualification. Yeah. You know, at this point at this point in the skating season, we may not even know who our Olympic entries were. Mm-hmm. I, mean, yeah, so I mean, the other thing is that, so if this were a winter sport, right? So a lot of the ice has to get melted because they're not going to keep the electricity on and all of that going right. when the rinks are going to be no closed one. for months, right? Like they will, a lot of the ice will just get melted and that's just what happens. And then, you know, they have to start that process up again. So it, it sets everyone back a lot. I mean, I'm sure the swimming pools and everything like that, that's kind of another reality from this i mean there are athletes like simone biles where her parents own a gym but in many other places you know everything is being shut down so yeah and you think like athletes are healthier and that is like true um although you know athletes get sick after they compete the thing is is that if one person is exposed to something especially when you don't know something for two weeks you think about how much sweat and how much like saliva and ickiness like you ever see the gymnast like spit on tv like Imagine the, or, or the yeah. skaters with all their Kleenex that they oh. hand off to their coaches and stuff. Yeah. So that's the grossest thing is when you're doing, when you do spins and it's cold and flu season, stuff flies out sometimes and you don't know where it lands, Jonathan. I'm just telling you, it yeah. happens. And it lands somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it could like, keep you up at night if you watch any like pandemic or anything. It could land on your partner, Dave. <laughs> it could land on your or, partner. Or, yeah. Geez. Okay. And again, you might be fine, but grandma might not. So yeah, it, all of these things. So yeah, I don't know. It's, I don't see how, I mean, they so could. If you're, do you if think you're it, the head of that committee, yeah. like are your options, do you just have to scrap it or are you trying to reschedule it? So the IOC originally said that they were going to go on as planned. We knew that that was obviously not really going to happen, but they were gaslighting us. I'm wondering, are they going to try to push it back four months? Or are they going to try to push it back a year? I imagine well, it'll be yeah. a year. I think you would have to do it the following summer. I don't think it would work if you just put it in the middle. Because also, it's the culmination of each sport coming to you. Yeah. Like, I don't know, does the does the swimming season correlate the yeah. same way in the calendar year as the gymnastic season? I don't know. And the reality of it is that athletes have peaked their bodies for this point in time. There are some people that are, like, trying to hang on. It will help some people and hurt some people, and it's just going to be one of those of things where you say, what yeah. if? Yeah. So, I... There are athletes that could be but injured. in some ways, at least it's a what if for everyone in the sport, not yeah. in a one particular country. You know, yeah. when we talk about the boycotts of 80 and 84 or something like that, you think about, well, so-and-so wasn't there. We'll never know. But this is, unfortunately, there's a universality to it that just yeah. puts everyone in the same predicament. Now, you know more about the gymnastics. Can someone like Simone hang on for a full another year? I mean, yes. Do they want to? Okay. I mean, mentally, I think it's... I think the hardest part about this is the mental 
are they or aren't they going to be happening, right? And I don't know yeah. exactly. I've never been fully you clear. You have to plan like they are in a way. Yes. In that one percent chance that they do happen. So when the athletes boycotted, I know it's different for everyone, but I always wondered like when athletes came to the realization that with their U.S. was going to boycott in 1980 because there were some gymnasts who did not even choose to go to the Olympic trials. Like, Kurt Thomas didn't go to the Olympic trials, though he was the best gymnast in 1980. He didn't compete in the summer events because he knew we weren't going. And right. so he's technically not an Olympian for 1980, even though they still had a trials. And then there are people that are like Olympians that didn't compete in 1980, but they're technically okay. Olympians. And I mean, I'm sure it gives you peace of mind and things like that. But But then those Olympic trials results are really not completely realistic because right. not everyone pushed themselves to compete but i think it's the same thing now like there are certain athletes in certain sports who are probably still training and then there are athletes who can't and they're they might go to other states or things like that and try to work around but i think eventually it doesn't put everyone on a fair playing field so even if you have an olympic trials what good does it do the qualifiers are now being canceled left and right so i don't see how that is yeah. going to be helpful so yeah, I think I think the decision for them is do we prolong it a year? And I mean, could you imagine the entire city has to be okay with that? That must throw a ripple in so much. Oh yes. And then, or do you just let this go, which would be also devastating for the city that's hosting? It's you know, bad. they they don't even break even. I feel anymore. Oh, let no. alone, they're not even going to be able to do that. I mean, and that was a big thing too. I was talking to Sandra Bezik about. So there was a game being played where Skate Canada allegedly didn't want to be the ones to have to cancel the world championships. And there are different games of which body can cancel it because obviously these events are backed by insurance. So, oh, okay. Now I imagine that a global pandemic would um, qualify as like an act of God. In contracts, there are certain clauses that are called act of God um, yeah, know, it's what, a contract, it's what you know. unfortunately is killing every performing artist, all this force majeure, like, yeah. I, so it's, you know, in the breach of the contract, but is it, were there no penalties, but for certain things, you know, the insurance won't pay out. And Katarina was saying that when they did Carmen on ice, that they had to actually show up on the set every single day, even though it was an outdoor rink and there were torrential rain in Spain, they had to pretend like they were going to film, even though they knew that they weren't going to film, in order for the insurance to still cover them. So it's just okay. this whole... They had to sh show an effort. Show, yeah. yeah. Even though okay. it was like a rainstorm, there was zero chance of anyone skating. They had to but, yeah. do something. and put. So I imagine that is why they had to wait for Quebec and Montreal to cancel. So Yeah, for it to be government mandated. They had to cancel it. Yeah. So... That's interesting. Like, so did the does the IOC then ensure the Olympics, and then they're waiting for Tokyo to cancel? Does Tokyo want the IOC to cancel? I mean, that is literally, I think, what you're going to see kind of the ping pong go back and forth. So okay, but I mean, uh, you just think about all those years. If the Olympics had been postponed, the Winter Olympics had just been postponed by one season. Mm -hmm. Whole shifts would be happening in major ways in the skating. Yeah, so. And what do you think about the World Championship? So there's a lot of... So the ISU originally said that these events could be pushed back. And I think it's an interesting thing because obviously you want to have a World Championships, right? But if you move the Worlds to October, I... Th I, I don't even want to hear it. I think it's such a bad idea. So I think it's a bad it's idea... No even though I yeah. want to have a Worlds and I would love to watch a second Worlds, I think it's a bad idea for the athletes. Um, I think so, too. And even though I think it would be great if, you know, we could all be back to normal and, you know, hopefully and everything is, you know, hopefully taken care of. If you think about it, that would put the athletes competing and it would be a big event, so that certainly skaters would get up for it. So they'd be competing in a Worlds and then usually there's a come down period but then they're supposed to be getting either new programs or competing the programs they already have. And then... Yeah. Then so getting... would most people, do you think, keep the same program? No, I think they would all get all new programs anyway. Or is it like a, 
a world that does like a post Olympic world where it doesn't really count and no one really takes it that seriously, even though you could, it's still a yeah, world there's always be that asterisk next to it, yeah, right. And and the people are just getting up for the beginning of the season and it's like a Skate America worlds, right? But then people are going to push themselves, right? So then you have the skater who pushes themselves to be ready in October to be on top of their game. Well, then, then they have to come down. The Grand Prix will the be The Grand Prix is right they there. They have to cancel the Grand Prix. They would have to cancel the Grand Prix, which they're not going to do. Um, no. And then the whole other skating, because um, honestly, the next year is more important. The next year is the pre-Olympic worlds that sets up the Olympic qualification. So I really don't understand this charade that all the events can just happen in October. I mean, Synchro might be able to do October because they don't have the Grand Prix and they could theoretically yeah. get back together. And I'm sure the ISU would want as many events as possible to get on for revenue and things like that. But it just, it becomes very, very difficult. I think yeah. it's more important for the sport that the Grand Prix happens next fall instead of basically two worlds in one season. Yeah. Especially because it's going to throw, and then all the nationals that happen right in the downtime mm -hmm. again, and it's going to throw a real wrench. We're going to lose out on seeing some programs we may have wanted to have seen at this year's world, but we're going to see a lot of repeats then that probably wouldn't have been repeated otherwise. And they'd have to repeat it through that whole season. I know we already yeah, see so few Hanyu programs. I mean, how are we going to do two in a year? So yeah, exactly. I, I mean, and I think the quicker they can make a decision to let go of that question mark, mm -hmm. because I think that's where a lot of the anxiety, I would imagine a lot of the anxiety for the, the um, athletes is in, are we or are we not? Let's just get an answer that we know we can stick to. And the answer is, we're just going to have to avoid it. See you in the fall. And it's exhausting. Yeah. It's mentally draining. And I think for right now, so, the indecision is what is... The most training. I, I, I if if I were in charge, if I ruled the world, it would be let's just scrap it. We're really sorry, um, Ms. Costa and Naya, because we knew this was your big chance. <laughs> uh, not happening, and it may not happen ever again. And we're really sorry. We just don't know what else to do, and and go on with the fall sort of. You could name someone planned. like the the champion of the season. I mean, they have those ISU rankings. They could always use them or something to award standings if they. So need you to. you riddle me this. So the results of the world championships mm -hmm. now does determine what for the Grand Prix. It definitely determines that the, the medalists can't compete against each other. Correct. At the same event, right? Correct. So do you think they just go back to sort of results from this year's Grand Prix final in order to kind of come up with those placements for the next season would, Grand Prix? I think you have to use the overall results for the season. Because... The ISU total points. I think that's probably the fairest way of doing it because there are athletes okay. who theoretically could have, and I'm not thinking of every possible athlete in every possible scenario, and this is what makes it so difficult to retroactively make a rule change. Um, I think it would make more sense if athletes then, like Vincent So didn't compete in the, in the fall, right? So how do you award him points. So I think that they would just go off of the annual year results is what I think they would do. But okay. I'm not in charge. I don't know. Yeah. And it's, it's a minefield. Like it's going to be, I do think the Congress could be more interesting than ever. I mean, the, the things that happen are going to be very interesting decisions. What comes down there. And well, and because then the other big thing that comes out of worlds is of course, what the placements are for next year. Mm -hmm. So do, do you, you just carry it over? I mean, are certain countries, did certain countries probably stand to lose or gain a considerable amount of spots? This is where or we need it... skating scores to please do a comparison yeah. of the ISU rankings versus <laughs> what they would mean. But then do you, do you have to then do a couple different scenarios? Because you would have to use the three per country rule and you would have to start right. canceling out what that would mean for certain people. I mean, it, it might help a country get an extra spot or lose a spot but i don't think it's going to make a huge difference i don't know what the fair thing to do is to just keep it the same i mean obviously perhaps certain countries performed at a higher level this year than they did last year so i i don't know there are many years that would have probably helped ashley wagner and gracie gold if they had used those for the u.s to get the three spots versus the two spot but then it didn't pan out right so, i don't know it would be interesting to see a historical analysis but 
Because, it, I mean, let's just use the U.S. as an example. Mm-hmm. We probably stood to earn the same amount of spots we already had. There was an outside have... shot that Mariah Bell and Brady Tunnell could have been six and seven or five and eight. And that that okay. would have... And I said an outside shot because people are going to go, well, I think Rika would be this and Young Yu would be this. And obviously things happen in competition. Rika was considered to be a, a bit of favorite a year ago to get right. first or second, didn't even make the podium. So things do change. It's why we have a competition. Um, the U.S. could be seventh and eighth, could be eighth and ninth, could be ninth and tenth. I mean, right. things happen. Uh, Wakaba was, you know, on the upswing. So I, you never know what could happen at, at that kind of an event. But, yeah, I mean, look, someone could break their leg mid-program. You never, someone's boot could break. You have no idea. We've seen yeah. it a million and one times this season, so you don't know what could happen. So in that sense... Yeah, I don't. I don't know what the fair thing to do is, but yeah. I think I think there are a million countries that could say, "Well, we deserve three spots," and they could have a legitimate argument. You know, like they could have right. said totally. that Wakaba and Rika would have, you know, gotten the points that they needed for three spots for Japan for next year, and they could have, they could be worthy of three spots. You could say that Brady and Mariah were so good throughout you know, the majority of the season. So I, I don't know what they're going right. to do there. Which which um, sort of matchup in general were you most disappointed to miss from World? I Mine was to, Ice Dance. Ice Dance. Day. It's Ala, Ala with the collar. I wanted to see that. I know. Yeah. Second, the Chinese against Tamara Moskvina, because I feel that this is maybe the last high-level team that Tamara Moskvina is going to coach. And though I think that the Chinese are a better classical team, I think that Moskvina knows how to peak a team for an event. And that that... And land the side-by-side. Yeah. Yeah. Then Nathan versus Hanyu. I think we knew what way it was trending. Um, Well, and that's a matchup we have the pleasure of seeing often. I think with the Atari I mean, girls, we've seen them compete against each other a million and I one times. I think that we knew. Yeah, that that I was. I mean, there are people that say Trusova peaks at the end of the season. Blah, blah. I mean, look, she's trying five quads. She's trying more quads. We saw maybe she was doing four quads. There was a video of her on Instagram. I didn't even watch it all the way through because I'm like, I've seen this program. Um, but I felt like. I know this drill. Yeah. We know all of these drills at the end of the. But the, the ones, I mean, this is mm-hmm. the most blessing and curse sort of scenario here, I think, was really in this ice dance situation. Yes. Yeah. So it um, would have I been think so some people are very thankful that it's not happening. And it makes me wonder for a team like Chalk and Bates. They had a vehicle this year. That, you know, it's they disappointing were- for them. Um, it was interesting because, oh my God, that was one of the cringiest things when, the, and the Montreal teams were trying to make it about the skating public and I was like ooh this should really be framed about the world the entire world missing the world championships and not just the skaters but they were trying to do something very noble and different skaters had different levels you know Tim Coletto had a better response and maybe someone else did there and you know I think Mervyn Tran had a good uh, response but interesting you look at Hubble and Donahue it they're still reigning world medalists so it they dodged a bullet here yeah I, I don't think this is going to go well for them. And I think um, they might have some gratitude about a very unfortunate situation because yeah. it may allow them to just try again now, another, without any ram- Another thing we have to think about is that athletes do make a lot of money between, I mean, Stars and Ice doesn't pay what it did, but especially the shows in Asia, some of the shows in Europe, some of the, and the World Championship prize money, there is a substantial portion of income that skaters earn that does set them back before next season. Um, skaters who make, now a lot of skaters that are invited to those shows may have sponsors and may have endorsements and things like that that helps them and they get funding from their federation, but there are some skaters that really do need the money that the they earn. Yeah, so. Well, and as we know, or you've discussed on the show, titles <laughs> help that fee. Mm-hmm. So for someone like Kostanaya, who I think arguably was the favorite to win. Mm-hmm. She doesn't have world champion title if mm-hmm. a show has her come do something now. Yeah. Even though she probably would have. I think by missing some accolades, 
unfortunately, it will affect them later down down the line as well. And with the Atari girls, you don't know which one will be around in a year. And there's an argument that each one could be at the top in a year, that each one could be gone in a year. I mean, things happen. If Valigeva is among those four, now we've really got a, a, a group of four that we have to figure out who's staying at home. Well, I think that, I don't know if she's that age. I think she has another year in the juniors, right? Doesn't oh, she does. She... Okay. Oh, I'm looking this up now. Wait. Yeah, she's only 13, so she'll have a whole nother year. Oh, <laughs> she seems not 13. Um, oh, wait, did I do it the right way? I have to, I get confused. The ISU rules not being on January 1st confuses me. No, but I don't think she's eligible next year. No. Okay. No. Okay. No, no, no. She's not eligible because she's not by July. Okay. No, no. Yeah. She's juniors another year. Okay. So, anyway, okay. it'll be another matchup with her and uh, Alyssa Liu. I mean, everyone's already responded to the comments. You're wrong. So, anyway, it'll be another <laughs> year of those girls. So, yeah. I mean, it keeps it interesting. But, well, what are you? Th- what were your highlights of the season? If you have to give out awards, Jonathan, what would you say? What was your I know. Okay. Favorite program I... of the season. Gosh. So one of my really like nice feel good moments from the season was seeing sort of the return of get ready because there's going to be a whole bunch of Velveeta coming at you. Like, is the return of Wakaba's um, legitimacy? I think in her own perception. Like I felt when we watched it at Skate America and she finished that short program, I think she surprised herself. This is all me making this up. Mm. I think she surprised herself and it totally set the narrative for the rest of the season. And I like stories like that. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's like a quasi comeback story, but really like a belief in self. And then that triple axel, I'm telling you, I've always wanted to see it from her in competition because she has such beautiful ones in practice. And it was pretty darn close. Mm-hmm that last attempt so um that was kind of my feel-good story okay was her I can't say that was my favorite program that is not what i am saying in fact okay um but yeah so that was like my good feel-good moment do you have a feel-good okay i would say shoma uno's comeback <sighs> and the... another great choice yeah and the comeback of Chalk and Bates, which started at the end of last season and continued to go into this season, especially after we were so down on their programs and their material for many years, and they made a lot of improvements. I would say that that was a big step up this season. It was a perfect season. program for them. It was so cool to see. Again, I know that it's not quite as technically challenging or whatever, but they picked it just right for them. Mm-hmm. It was the perfect vehicle. Do you have so. costume awards for this year? Oh, dear. Um, I needed to think on this a little bit more. Uh, to be honest, I did enjoy Sherbakova's moment. Okay, so I okay, I would have to say she had a costume moment, like the first and second yeah. time. By the end of yeah. the season, we knew it was coming. I think if you don't know it's coming, it's fine. Worst costume moment is truce of us, unnecessary and not dramatic enough of a change. And like, it was- Then they even- Bit for a while, right? Yeah, it was so okay. Oh, she got one. We'll give you one too. Kind of. It didn't... like terrible. <laughs> Everything that we hate about that camp was epitomized uh-huh. in that, right? Yeah, agreed. Um, I would say my favorite costumes would be Madison Chalk's and Evan Bates's snake charmer costumes. I just think Matthew Carone just her... killed it. It's this amazing. Year with that, I have to tell you, um, Alexa had very pretty dresses. She did, and it was it was. I thought they were very elegant. Actually. I know she Marie condoed last year's to buy this year's, and you know they looked great. So yeah, she, oh, so she think upgraded. about her. So partner tryout slash partner teaming up. What do you do? Do you, if you can't skate, do you start off ice? I mean, they were saying twenty California shut down, so I imagine you invite him over and you start practicing lifts in your in your uh, living room. In your living room. <laughs> Just play a bunch of trust games and really get to know. Get Let's start before. doing twists off the ice. And yeah, I mean, I think I think new partner could just move into your living room and do, we just get going. So yeah, exactly. Really connecting, really bonding, <laughs> really connect. That could yeah. be a quick end. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Poor Chris. Together. Like, oh my gosh. Um, I think my element of the season. Is oh yes, tell me. Coaster Nias Triple Axel. Because of that complex intro. Or, the I mean, intro, the way it was done, the pleasingness to the soul, the everything. I yeah. mean, it just, it was 
the moment of the year, the consistency. So, and I have a, a very controversial one. Okay. But I have to say, at his first Grand Prix, I think it was. I should have checked. It was Samarin's, um The quads and the short okay. were so bam. He didn't do them again ever like that. I am not a fan of the material. I'm not, but those particular jumps I felt were some of the highest level quads we had seen all season. Were those? Let's Can I revise them. something? I'm thinking that I was just mean to Trusova. She deserves only to be the second worst costume of the season. Okay. Nathan Chen's Vera Fine. Wang costumes were the ugliest things and the sloppiest things and the most aesthetically Billowy. unfortunate things, and they just communicated. Yeah. A thing about his like this like lackadaisical thing that they try to do in his skating. I was just going to use that word. Forward. Yeah, flippin'. It seemed flippin' almost. Hated it. Hated it. Well, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't st- ugly the yellow one in particular. Horrible. Yeah. Horrible. And even we know you know bad color can be bad color, but it's the fit that took away from the line. What are you doing? Seemed unusual. Who designed that? What was the Defend, defend that choice. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> I don't want to see that. Okay. It's true. It's true. No one did. Aunt Sassy. I don't want to see that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. I got that one. I mean, Valjeva's short was great, but we saw it last year. Um, right. Kind of more of the same. Uh, you know, I think... I mean, otherwise, it was, it was a lot of season. There was a... A lot of more of the same going on. We saw a lot of programs we've seen before. A lot of skaters we've yeah. seen before. So, uh, most controversial results, Dave. Um, the European Championships in ice dance, I think. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Same. Best dramatic moment. A Terry posting. Sayatsuba <laughs> was just. The height of the season. There was nothing better. That was, that was yeah. the, just... That was something. That was something. That entire feud that just went on and on was really the and greatest. It was so embarrassing for them. I was like, will you guys just, someone shut up for two seconds. Embarrassed? I mean, it's who they are. I wasn't shocked or Yeah, I guess. Because there's that air, they try to create that air of sophistication with the designer labels and they're trying to do above it all and then they just... Oh, they're all such all. actresses. Yeah. yeah I mean, true. greatest addition to the skating community, silver medalist, hot Sergey, gold medalist, Marina Hoffman, a Terry sister who also sings on the side like a real housewife. I mean, she really... <laughs> I think one of my favorite kiss and cry moments, though, was the um, Europeans with Moscovina in the kiss and cry. And when the pair stood up, she was also standing up, but she didn't clear the flowers. So you just see like her eyes and she's holding the hands of the the pair guy. It was pretty amazing. She was the real star there. Okay. A hundred percent. We just could only see this much of her behind the flowers. (laughs) Also, like... The greatest sideshow, and I didn't do a video on it because people get so touchy about pregnancy and you don't want to say something, but the is she or isn't she pregnant of Elena Uyinik was just great, okay? Because yeah. Buyanova said she was pregnant. We have, a, like, friends who know their camp that are like, I think she might be pregnant. I'm not sure, even though I, like, and then acting like, oh, no, we knew all along, but... She was literally posting on Instagram, like, hiding herself like a sitcom character, where, like, someone will always be standing behind a plant or behind a wall or leading... A well-placed throw pillow, just, like, right on the... Yes! (laughs) It was... But... um, And one of the most uncomfortable things to watch right now is the skater narcissism of skaters who are craving attention during the coronavirus. And then skaters that we don't really need to hear from, but they're trying to use this as an opportunity to Sean Rabbit the situation. That Sean Rabbit video- Dave, this is happening in opera all the time. Excuse me, your ex 
is singing non-operatic soon. He needs to have a private concert every day. I mean, these narcissists, they need so much attention and they don't it's the have outlet. that vehicle. You can't take that outlet away. Yeah. Ashley Wagner and the brother were doing her Sweet Dreams program, teaching the dance and the choreography on her Instagram Live. And while I loved it, I was also thinking, it does say something that we can do all of Ashley's programs on the floor. There were not a lot of complex turns going on. <laughs> I shouldn't be able to do all of your Olympic choreography, just as a general rule, if just you're doing a general rule. Right? Yeah. So, I don't know. What about your comeback? this year. We had uh, several comebacks this season. Well, I was thought Shoma one... Uno was really... I was worried oh, yeah. for him. I mean that from even the... I'm talking Gracie. I'm talking Stolbova. Oh. I'm talking like so people Stol that had... Really... The Gracie comeback uh, was the gift, right? Her, the sectionals, mm -hmm. Paulina skating to cats. Um, but Gracie's comeback obviously has us all fascinated, I think. I mean... Uh, the the lead up to nationals specifically. Oh, with the skis yeah. coach. I mean, come on. Or quite frankly, Karen. Karen had a very heartwarming yeah. comeback, but it wasn't as entertaining as Gracie's, okay? Gracie's made yeah, us guess. On the same way, yeah. I mean, when you're being coached by Vincent Rastoncourt, that is very special. And that makes us mm. want, we'll just, come on. I wanted to see and it. Sure enough, when she took matters into her own hands and kind of kicked them to the curb, she really did surge forward. And she really enjoyed her interviews saying dark things to Andrea Joyce and just shocking Andrea, who Andrea seems like, you know, she's on the same wavelength as like, she's like on the same wavelength as like Savannah and Hoda Kotb, you know? <laughs> I just, you know, Andrea Joyce is the one that's supposed to be there and be like, Tanya, walk us through your fall on the axle. <laughs> Didn't she say like it was like dying for the second time or like seeing your life being in a plane crash for the second time? There was something like I I was just thinking like poor Lynn Plage is like standing next to there being like I don't know what to do. Yeah. Poor Lynn Plage. How is she doing? Also Lynn's comment, wouldn't she I love Lynn, but like you know, she plays the game better than anyone. But when she was saying she was sharing a status and she was like, We all trust that the ISU has the skater's best interest at heart. And I remember reading that being like, do we? Do we? Yeah. Well, does ISU stand for a different organization? Yeah, like I'm familiar Land. With the ISU. And then I could like, I could hear her going, oh, David, you know, like two, I could just, the whole thing played, we had a whole conversation in my mind. You know? Okay, okay. <laughs> also favorite moments of cringeworthy moment, Vanessa and Morgan endorsing Natalie Page a lot. That was very special that Morgan thought. Morgan doing shirtless Billie Jean. Morgan and all the men lifting up Alexia Paganini. I mean, Morgan's refusal Timing to like, was, his refusal yeah. to like take a hot seat for like a moment and just like let the coronavirus steal your thunder. But instead yeah. he keeps putting himself out there because all these performers need such validation. They need it. They need it. Yeah. I mean, each so they, one having a dramatic post about this was the last time we were going to do this short program. And I was like, your cover of Rihanna was not a work of art. I mean, it was a decent program, but like... But let's not get carried away. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. These skaters, sometimes, Jonathan, it's hard. It is really yeah. hard, right? So Because they're trained to think it's the only thing happening in the world. And it's clear that some of them buy that. Oh, I know. They some buy it more than others. Okay, it's it's been a long season. It's been an entertaining season. Yes, it has. What do you, I'm trying to think back to? Like what was the most? I mean, I had the most feels during Europeans because my boy did it. <clears throat> I mean, but Archer Danielian getting. I mean, Russian I know, nationals yeah. delivered, and his his need for validation from his coach. I was like, I see you. I know what that feels like. <laughs> Um, but also, She's, I have to say, I think it was NHK delivered like a pretty spectacular competition overall. How about Jason Brown doing river dance in his hallway? That was also special. Did you see it? I couldn't unsee it. Okay. Oh, how would you like to be a downstairs neighbor? Oof. Oof. <laughs> I think he was in like his parents' home. But oh, okay. Okay. The Sean Rabbit video in the costume getting out of bed was. You know, Sean... I haven't seen that you know, one. I have to go check that one out. I think there's zero chance that he's really retiring. Okay, come on. 
He likes this way too much, Jonathan. He is not ready to give it. That he has the Amber Corwin, the TSL Amber Corwin Award for Excellence and Longevity. Okay, keep it. Or going. Fumier. <laughs> the Fumier Seguri okay. Award. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sean Rabbit is a legend. You, look, one day he will two foot and under rotated double carrot triple axle at the Nationals. Go the rest of it clean. Come on, we just we're not ready to give this up. He was on TV this year. Right. He should not give it up. Okay. Yeah. He won't. <laughs> Don't push him out. Don't push Hillary out of the race too early, Barack. Okay? Like, I'm telling you. All right. Um, what else? There's just, like, so much this season. I mean, Deanna. Deanna this season. Oh. Rod Black calling Deanna old in 17 different ways during the CBC coverage or CTV, whatever it is. Within, there, there was not one minute that passed without it. It wasn't while they were discussing it. He accidentally said it. He just hit us over the head with it. But in a Canadian nice way where he kept calling mm. her old and being surprised at how old she was constantly. Like, can you believe she can even tie her skates at that age? And Tracy was like... Mm. It would have wound up in Ms. Magazine if more people cared about skating. It was that uncomfortable. Right. Yeah. Truly. Mm -hmm. Truly. I was waiting uh, for her to ask, like, if she decided not to have kids so she could keep skating. I mean, it was that uncomfortable, okay? That was yeah, like... he just, he's a one-trick pony, and once he really decides what it was, that was Stephen Gogolev at the last Canadian Championships, not uh, this year's, where he just constantly said how young he was. He just fixates on one thing and just but goes, Jonathan, goes, goes, we did. Tell me. I did point out a couple years ago that Tracy and Rod are my favorite every year. Jonathan Byer. <laughs> Gosh, he's such a mess. But I have to say, I would take him over that asshat who was the horse racing guy. Oh, what him, what event Ted. was that? Was I that would take Rod Black over both Ted and the other guy any day. Okay. Well, at least Ted will give you some information at the end and knows not to speak during the Come thing. On, That's what Jonathan. the guy I wasn't love, kidding. I love Rod. Okay, I, I, I just, he is such comedy, okay? Come but I, I think that sentiment is shared in the other sports in which he comments also. Yes. Because okay. I was talking to my Canadian friends, they're like, oh, it's the same in every sport he touches. It's just as ridiculous. And I was like, oh, okay. But maybe if we're we were exposed to him more, he would really great. But I find it hysterical. Like that one week a year, yeah. we really bond. It's so out of context. Yeah. It's great. Okay. He's looking for sound bites. He's looking to be in like a montage video because but, it's interesting when you go back some of the my favorite olympic moments are coinciding with the commentator giving you some really enthusiastic gold material there how and, about the planned uh, speech that ted gave about russia elevating the sport with their artists he gave that speech at the russian nationals in the warm-up that was such a cringe it's a bit propaganda -y, yeah i mean but that's who's paying his check yeah but he can't even pronounce terry's last name <laughs> that's the greatest part and the russians don't attack him for that they think he's so nice they don't care okay like yeah that. and he always takes a good pause and like gears himself up for danny's last name yeah and he'll be like with choreography by danny i had a conversation with like a very like on the straight and narrow canadian coach who like knows the things but he was trying to explain ted to me he was like well he's very sincere and he's actually an aggressive leader he actually wants to mimic what the Russians are doing and copy it. He's complete. It's completely sincere. He said he completely has bought in. So yeah, if he believes it, that's the one. I don't get the sense that he's faking it, but you get the sense that it's so he extra. wants them to notice also. Yeah. Yes. 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 He pushed his way in over Tatiana Flad and Ari. Okay. Come on. Although I'm trying to think, I wish I had remembered some of the specifics of the horse guy because when he, he was basically describing skating for deaf viewers, which I don't know that skating has a large deaf community that, that follows, or excuse me, blind community, <laughs> because he was just, <laughs> sorry, I was like, what? That well, the deaf skaters, sense. they cure their own hearing all the time. I mean, that was another highlight of this season. Okay, that thank, was. Thank you. Incredible. But for the Brenda Kerrigans in the audience, she might have really enjoyed the commentating. You know, figure skating has always been on the forefront um, with the hearing impaired and the, uh, and the visually, visually impaired. impaired. Yes. And often the socially <laughs> <Yes>. impaired. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Yeah. I'm not going back. <laughs> yeah, almost exclusively. <laughs> yeah, okay. Oh my goodness. I mean, Jonathan, the adult nationals were canceled. You don't even know how intense, like that's for people with anxiety. I mean, that intensity. You can't return those props. You bought them. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> the <proper> chicken? <laughs> Stop. You can't return it. Yeah, I mean, come on. <laughs> come can't on. they use props? Isn't that part of the thing? Um, they can for certain, um, the, I think for the, uh, the, the, light entertainment and i'm trying to give the official names to these okay they're all the aviva cantor events she is the queen of these events in adult figure skating okay Okay. Mm -hmm. and she also Mm -hmm. runs the committee and she writes her thing oh she also had a speech about we previewed the adult figure skating on sea alive and like she definitely had a prepared speech that she wanted to give she also tried to take over the show and tell me like who to put on screen and what to do. And I was like, you are a bus driver, girl. Like I... <laughs> We're just going to do a quick read of the room. I want you to meet you and know your audience. <laughs> it was a... It, it was so... It, and the bus driver reference comes from when Barbara Walters appeared on the Oprah Winfrey show and they were describing how Rosie came out of you saying that she just wanted to be a member of the team. She didn't want to take it over. And then they were going, but Rosie is a bus driver. And Oprah was like, Rosie is a bus driver. And I was like, <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> Missed the Oprah Winfrey show, watched it every day. Okay. Like, Interesting. Yeah. Yes. Go Chicago. Yeah. Go Chicago. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, on a sad <laughs> note, the skating world. Oh, terrible. Yeah. Lost Chris Reed. And it was. I mean, talk about a mainstay and how long the Reeds have been involved in the sport. And a very nice guy only, from all Only accounts. 30 years old, right? Only 30 years old. Tragic, um, tragic. Passed away. You know, they were from Michigan. They moved to New Jersey. They trained at Hackensack for years. Um, and just obviously love skating. I mean, they went to... How many Olympics did he even go to? He went to 2010, 2014, and then 2018. So a three-time Olympian. And then he was skating with, um, obviously, his sister Kathy for years and years and years. They originally skated, came up to the ranks in the U.S., and then they represented Japan. Um, and, I mean, they've been coached by almost everyone in skating. I mean, they were with Marina, Igor, Nikolai, Galiche, Mazda Moscali. I mean, their, their list of <clears throat> former coaches, I mean, people that know that are touched, you know, that have overlapped with them, and it's... You know, when they seem to pay it forward, they seem very active within the sport and within the yeah. development of it in Japan also. Yes. I mean, we obviously see Kathy choreographing for everybody. The other sisters in Lithuania, you know, they're all over the place. And I do have to say that, like, I mean, it's so sad. Very nice guy. But there was a humor about it because it just so happened that at the... Tw- I'll, I'll always remember this about the reeds, which is not a slight on them. It's just a slight of, like, how it is to find a partner in this sport to become competitive. But to me, there was something inherently hilarious about siblings skating back to back that live in New Jersey. And Chris and Kathy are skating for Japan, doing a compulsory dance in Vancouver. And who skates after them? But Allison Reed, who's skating for Georgia, Israel, like one of the, one of the countries, the Isabella Tobias countries that they're going right after. I mean, it was just it, it was just perfectly all skating. From the same living room. Yeah. It was just all yeah. skating, ice dance. I mean Yeah. I mean, yeah, but they're they have set up a GoFundMe and I'll put the link in the description. I donated to it. Um, they are trying to already set up a memorial foundation to help other skaters forward. So oh, I that's thought that really that beautiful. Was, yeah. yeah. So And were you that. telling me that so they had the service and then they did they, they stream it? They had to live stream right? it. I mean, it's during the coronavirus time. I mean, think about it. Uh, yeah. They were talking the same thing because uh, Kenny Rogers, right? They were they were like, we can't have the big to-do. We're going to have to figure out something for later. Yeah. So uh, he had sudden cardiac arrest. Um, and it, they haven't, I think it's been so overshadowed. We haven't like learned more. Someone was saying something that maybe about a heart, you know, issue or something before. I'm not really sure. I have... Um, it's so hard and so shocking, especially when, I mean, there's no, not that death is ever easy, but I mean, it really goes out for the family. I mean, it has to be completely sudden and shocking and yeah. Yeah. So no preparation. So, yeah, there's just, 
It's terrible. Um, yeah. So, and I know, I mean, everyone just has been saying how nice he was and, you know, posting things. So, uh, actually, yeah, I've actually never met any of the reads, I have to say, but everyone has. I've listened. seen him skate live a couple times. I've seen him skate, yeah. yeah. I, uh, I never met him. And I, and Kathy was just on the, remember she was on the ISU feed and she was like really, really strong at doing mm. at the Worlds last year. She was yeah. the, manning the, uh, Womaning, she seems the, a pretty important hosting mover and the, shaker. Well, yeah, she come on, she's working with Mia Hamada, she's doing the ISU uh Instagram feed, and she was one of the best ones that did their feed, so yeah, and mm. so uh, terrible, but yeah, we'll be back. I'm sure that we will have lots to discuss in the coming weeks. I mean, hopefully, we can learn... chat with news as it comes in. Yeah, of course. We're not going anywhere we're into going... a show one week, and people were like, <laughs> "Well, that's because they do need to go over." You are you are cooking on See Alive, like that is an output of stuff. Wow. I'm so impressed. We're we're doing stuff, yes, but it's you know more. To come so i don't know it's just interesting i mean we're going to be doing stuff all we got a lot of old events to do jonathan we're gonna well i was just thinking yeah we could go visit and all together revisit a, a world of choice well we have a date to do the 98 olympics and ice dance and the 2010 olympics for the men so oh that'll be a good one yeah i think we should do the 2010 maybe next weekend we'll do it for our patreon we can yeah. schedule that. So you'll see us. We're, we're not going yeah. anywhere, you know. Yes. <laughs> we'll be back in 2010. <laughs> we'll be back. All right. <laughs> Hold the dredge and look sexy, everyone. All right. Bye. Bye, okay. guys.